Hello again everyone, Rebecca here. Welcome back to another Brutus Monroe Design Team Layout. And today I'm going to be playing with some chroma glaze and this beautiful stencil. I am just using a 12 by 12 white piece of cardstock, a little thicker weight there, um, and this beautiful stencil, which is it's a mixed media stencil by Brutus Monroe. Da, da, da. And it's called Blanket of Blooms, and there is the SKU number. It's BRU8248 if you want to pick that up. It is pretty. It is so pretty. And we're going to be playing with these two colors of chroma glazes. I've got daffodil and sherbet, which is a yellow and an orange. And I will have their SKU numbers and the, everything listed down below. I'm also going to pull in some of these, which I'm not 100% sure if they're still in the store, but... I wanted to use them because they're going to go with what I've got going on today. They are a Brutus Monroe sequin assortment, and look at how pretty those are. They're like blues and purples and clears and just fun. But they're, they're called Reach for the Stars, and their SKU number is BRU5779. If you want to pick those up, I will have my affiliate link listed down below as well. If not, just head to the store and buy everything because we know I do. I love Brutus Monroe, you guys. And I've always... My first love was the glitter glaze, but I have come to realize that I love them all. Um, the Brutus Monroe mixed media products are so unique in their properties and the way that they turn out on a layout and just how you can showcase your projects with their mixed media products is really like no other. Um, this is going to turn, the, the chroma glaze is going to be very shiny, and it does, some people have asked, like, how do you get it to not bleed under the stencil? Disclaimer, I like that look. I like the messy, very um, grungy looking mixed media when it comes to using stencils and the glazes or the paste or whatever you might be using. But, um, so I'm probably going to get bleeding. But my best tip for you is... When you put this down, your little stencil down, you know, and you take your palette knife, which, you know, any palette knife, I'm just going to grab one real quick, just any old palette knife, this is a, this is a Ranger product, um, but any of them will work. Uh, when you get your material on and you start swiping it across, you want to make the least amount of swipes as possible. Because the more you swipe and the more you try to get your excess, all of the material off, the more you're essentially forcing all the material underneath the stencil. So you want to make like one stripe and then you'll watch and I'll do this on screen. I'll, I'll get mine out. I won't get a big glob. I will get a me, you know, a small amount. It's kind of averages. You'll get the feel of it once you start playing and getting messy. And I make one swipe maybe two swipes and then I will take it and I will clean it off and I will get more. Instead of trying to get every little bit off of the palette knife through this stencil, I just do it this way and then pick that back up and make my way through. And that will help with your bleeding. Um, but yeah, the more that you work it, the more you're going to push it under the stencil. Uh, also, mixed media is all about layering. Let your layers dry in between each layer. So you'll notice that I'm going to do um, a very fun, I'm going to do like a border because I really like borders. It's either a sketchy line or ink in the edges or doing something. But my favorite thing to do with stencils and the glazes is to make a very, very fun mixed media border. White, messy space in the middle. Put my photos down, add some embellishments, and ta-da, you're done. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to do this corner, and then I'm going to set it to the side, and I'm going to let it dry. Now, I never really apply a thick layer of the glazes, and so they dry, like, relatively fast, like, record time. And then I'm going to come in, and I'm going to kind of match it up, and I'm going to do it again. But then this time I can do two at once, you know. And then I'll let that dry, and that's just so that it meets in the middle. You don't have some kind of weird thing. And I might end up with, like, a weird corner somewhere, but I like the way it looks, so I'm totally okay with it. Um, and then I'm going to also create... I have these punched-out hearts that are just, like, hanging out and being like, Hey, what's up? Are you ever going to use me? And I'm like, I don't know. But I thought it would be fun because it's going to be a very cute picture today. And I'm going to make some flowers because this is a flower background. So I figured I would pull out some brads and... 
you know, a scoring tool and fold these in half and make some fun flower embellishments out of these. Just because, you know, using up things that are sitting on my desk. I do also have this little container <laughs> of baby stuff. I think I'm going to pull out the blues and the yellows and try to use up as much as this as I can because I don't really do baby layouts that much anymore. Um, obviously, if you guys have been around, you, you know my son's going to, he'll be 21 in December. So, I mean, he just turned 20. But we're going to do a layout of him today. And this is Sam. So this is back in 2002. And he has on this a very ruddy, orangey, weird colored ensemble. And um, so that's why I pulled out the yellow and the orange. And then the blue to just kind of bring out a little bit. The, the little bears on his shirt have on like little blue bib overalls on. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And aren't these pictures cute? Like, let me, I guess i got to take a minute to talk about them. Okay, first of all, he's like super excited to have found his hands in his little bouncy chair. Again, my kid's 20. I don't even know if these things are still around, but it was just like a little metal piece of wire that sat like this. And they had, and they did this. They laid in this part and it was cloth and they bounced themselves. He loved that thing. So he was all excited, like getting all crazy because he had a hand. I know, right? But then I, this one he's not so happy because my kid really wanted you to hold him 24-7 all the time. He was a colicky baby. <clears throat> Excuse me. So he really liked to be held and let's just say 20 years later, kid is still spoiled. I ruined him right out the gate. But, um, and I sent him down to take a picture because he was looking super cute in his little bitty outfits. And uh, he was like, why are you putting me down? You must pick me up. I rule around here. So that is what is up with those photos. Um, I have no idea why this one is smaller. I couldn't tell you. These pictures are really, really old. I don't even know what that says, but this would have been in 2002 just because, you know, I know how old my kid is. <laughs> and the other thing that I have is this really random large paper clip, so I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start prepping this, and by prepping, I mean I'm going to move everything out of the way and then turn the camera back on once I have my rag and my wet wipes and all that stuff out. Um, but I don't need gesso, I don't need anything, I just need a piece of cardstock, palette knife, glazes, and a stencil. So just give me one second. See, I told you, one second, whoop, whoop. All right, so I've got this all out, and I think I'm going to start with the yellow down here, which is daffodil. Super pretty. Now, you guys know most of my mixed media, I put the um, Glad Press and Seal over it, but let's be honest, I use this stuff so much that uh, I don't need to worry about it, you know, drying out or anything. I always clean the top out because I like to conserve. And there's my big gunk on the side, okay, from how I pick it up, and then I put it back in there. So... I usually just give her one nice kind of, you know, just get it all mixed up nicely. All right. So that's about how much I'm going to focus, take off. And now if you can see here, I've got, I like to run my stencil off the edge personal preference. You guys can line it straight up, make it go to where they have it cut off. I just like to run it off the edge. It's kind of, that's just a personal thing. So I'm going to turn it this way and then I'm going to put my, I'm going to put pressure here. Um, sometimes I use washi tape, sometimes I don't. It just depends um, because I'm, I'm messy and like kind of clumsy you guys and sometimes I accidentally run the stencil through the media. So <laughs> It's easier just to do this, right? So I don't have to worry about trying to prop it, pull it back up. So, also, have you guys seen the new Birds Monroe product? The, what is it called? Stick and Stamp Mat? Oh, be tuned in for that. Anyway, sidetracked. Because I was just thinking of it sticking, because if you have a smaller piece of paper, that would work awesome. All right, anyway. So now I'm just going to take in, like I said, as least amount of strokes as possible. So you're just going to get it down, and then I'm just going to slide it across. Now when you got a little bit of mixed media in there, it's going to hold the stencil. So see, I cleaned it off. Then I'm going to grab just a bit more. 
put my pressure down and then once again clean it off grab some more and I'm not going for full coverage because I like the messy look and then we're going to come in here and I'm always go in the same direction um, also so that I, and that's just me I find it works better for me um, now I'm going to go this way but I'll keep swiping the same direction like I won't kind of move it around I don't know it's kind of hard and then we're just going to do like a random kind of all right <clears throat> and that's it I am not going to try to get I mean I might move that a little bit but that wasn't actually that was on the stencil um, just a little bit when it's a big glob like that, because I don't, it's stuck on the stencil and I try to pull it off. All right. <clears throat> I always close my media right away and I clean my palette knife off. So I just take a rag and just whoop, wipe her clean and then I will wash it. And then I grab my handy dandy tweezers. I do put pressure so that I can pick it up. And then, whoa! <laughs> and see, no bleeding! Because I, and, and, and I kind of wanted the bleeding, but I was trying to show you guys, because a lot of people have asked me, you know, how to not get the bleeding, and, um, set this to the side, but I use my stencil, because my nails are thick, and I need to get them removed, um, so look, look at how pretty that is, let's see if it'll pick up the texture, like, look at how dement, can you guys see that? Oh, so pretty. So now I will set this to the side, but see how I like how it runs off the edge there. So I will set this to the side. I'm going to let that one dry, and then we'll come back and we'll start filling in with the orange. So I'll be right back for you. Okay, it's, this is all dry now, and it is so pretty. I'm hoping that my lights don't wash this out, but look at how pretty it is washing it out. It is a very bright, fun yellow. I have such, like huge lights in this room to light it up so you can see what I'm doing that sometimes it washes everything out with the white background but I like my class mat so I don't know but yeah it is all dry and it is pretty and it is shiny and see how I like that messy edge so now what I do is I'm going to take this and all I'm going to do is kind of try to to line up best I can. I mean, it's not going to be perfect, but it's going to be hit or miss here. So you can usually find a spot. Where it's where it kind of looks like it goes. So we can do that. That would work actually. I'm going to miss it there. So we need to try to pull it down just a smidge. Let's see if we can get it. <laughs> oh, you know what? It goes this way. That's why. <laughs> oh, I love me. Just in case you guys wanted to know. It's this way. So it's this little guy. Well, let's just see. Where did Where did we put it? That's all you got to do, right? There you go. Okay. That took too long. And normally I'm not getting, I don't get that precise. But, so now we're just going, I don't really want to do that though. That's where it was. And this is not one that you're supposed to be able to do this. So it's not like it's going to be the end of the world if I can't get it. I just, just trying just a little bit to make it not look so crazy. Okay. And all I'm going to do is try not to hit this area that much right there. But it'll be fine if I do. And we're going to take the orange now. And like I said, I just give it a little stir. Wipe the excess off. Come in. Oh, I got a stringer. 
get about that much on the palettes. And then we're just going to kind of get that right there is just because I pulled it off the edge and I shouldn't have like the, I think the literal lip of the Okay, and then we're going to wipe that off, and we're going to come in, and I just want to get just a little bit right in there. Kind of went against my own words there and went several different ways, but that's okay. And another one of those little... We'll get that in a minute. Like my favorite is stuff in the world. Too much. So I'm just trying to get that guy right there. All right. So now this one, we are going to grab the tweezers yet again. We're going to pull up and then I'm going to slide it away so that I can clean that up. And we're going to turn it on. This is the part you got to be careful of because of the side that you put the mixed to media on. I've been known to set that side down just so we're all clear. And I'm not going to be able to like go in there and get it perfect, but we're going to set it down. We're going to grab our knife again. We're going to come in right here, and I am going to try to get it, I don't want it to go over the yellow, I just want to kind of make it mesh with the yellow, if that makes any sense. So have you guys tried using mixed media through a stencil? Do you like it? Do you do more of like a ink blending, um, or anything like that, with like distress ink or anything like that? or squishy some uh, embossing powder, like, uh, not embossing powder, uh, embossing ink versus uh, the, the, the disappearing ink, and then embossed over it. That's fun too. That's always a fun technique. Okay, and we're just going to clean this off and see so that it does get a little bit faster because you start doing it two at a time, but I don't want them to meet in a weird area. So like if you would, um, like do one up here, then it might not actually meet and you're not going to have like the same, but that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to put another yellow one here and we'll put a yellow one here and then we'll do orange, orange, and we'll end with a yellow one there. That should be the plan. And once I get that all done, I will come back and we will start finishing this layout up. Sorry about that, dog started barking. My computer crashed years ago and I lost a lot of photos from him this age. So I was super excited to find them and I do want to scrap them because none of these have ever been scrapped. So we're just going to trim that down. I am going to go ahead and back it in just some scrap white paper here. And I will be right back to show you how we're going to use this beautiful background with all these lovely chroma glazes through that beautiful stencil. Like, that is just gorgeous. And I'm actually thinking that the photos are probably going to go um, somewhere in here. And then we're going to pop, we're going to go ahead and take those little hearty hearts. And I'm going to get some of those made up. And I will show you how I do one on screen. Okay, so I have went ahead, and you've seen this. <laughs> I don't know what, I just really like to touch it. It's very textury and very fun. I went ahead and matted my two photos, and now i got to figure out where I want to put them. And this little oddball guy right here, I feel like, is where we're going to kind of cover that up. Maybe something like... That's because I did take all my hearts and we've done some things, well not all of them, but we've done some things with them. Um, but I like the way that that looks, so I am going to go ahead and do what I normally do, which is 
I always adhere my photos together um, so that I can move them as one. Um, and then we are going to go ahead and grab some foam and my sticky scissors. So I call them my sticky scissors because I use these just to cut sticky things. I have the fun, fabulous, um, all those other wonderful scissors. Now I bought these like bulk from Amazon or something and they have served their purpose. Uh, I, this was my last pair of them, which is why I knew I needed to order something else. And I thought if I only use them to cut sticker or sticky stuff, then I should be okay. That was my thought process. And then use all my other fun, um, Tim Holtz scissors to do all the other stuff. So that is why I have so many, um, scissors that I use and I pull out for different things. Like I've had several people ask me and it's, I don't know. I just feel like cutting all this sticky stuff and everything with, you know, when you, it, it will dull them and then they become my husband's garage scissors and because I don't want him to touch my scrapbook scissors. All right. So we just pop that up on some foam and we're just going to set that right there for now. So here are <laughs> my hearts. <laughs> I just took my scoreboard and a bone folder and just sliced them in half. So my idea is to make cute little flowers and they will be assembled on the page like so. That was trial and error on trying to figure out how I actually wanted them to come out and now yeah that's you know so they're gonna do it a little bit like so and they're not gonna end up like that like they're gonna they're gonna lay flat in the album but they do have enough dimension so when they get done there will be three flowers in the blues just because I'm using this beautiful yellow and orange he's got on red let's bring some more of the rainbow in so it's like a rainbow layout but every element is different the picture is mainly focused on red the background and that beautiful stencil and that fabulous chroma glaze I love the chroma glaze and daffodil in sherbet so we get the yellow and orange so bringing in some blues and greens for the flowers it will definitely be rainbow the only thing it's missing is purple and guess what I have in that sequin mix purple Yay! So let me go ahead and start getting this all stuck down and I will come back and we will finish the layout. All right, so it is all done and look at how pretty. Focus camera. It is all pretty, very messy, um, very textured. I did get a little bit more messy over here, but that's how I like it. I like messy. So now I need to trim these uh, photos down. We've got so much stuff in the way. This one's not going to be able to go any shorter, but it definitely can go like this. And see so we can get it to a little four by what is, I don't even know what that is. Not even three and a half. Totally fine. And then where he's all just angry at life. <laughs> oh, that's my child. I'm going to try it. Now these pictures I found, and this is actually really exciting for me because um, my computer crashed years ago. Hold please. Okay, real quick, I have got this all glued down and I took those cute little random items that I had that were baby and I'm going to pull in a few of those and just get those glued down and I'm just using my liquid glue for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm using, the, you know, hopefully this will hold glue. Because everything is kind of dimensional, and I do want to say something about how I did the clusters. So they look really messy right now, but they will dry, and I used clear glue. So when it dries, you won't be seeing the mess that it is right now. Um, but that is just so none of my sequins pop off. Um, let me do a little close-up for you. 
You see how you can see the glue, but it's going to dry clear. And I always squirt a big dollop of glue down, pop my sequins on, and then I put glue on top, and then just add a few more triples and drabs of the glue just to make sure that we get a nice secure hold. All right. Let's kind of come in there like that. Then I'm going to let that dry before I try to take my photos. Um, but yeah, so I will have everything linked down below for all this fabulous Burgess Monroe product. But I honestly think that that is all I want to do because I really don't want to cover up. Um, I do have the three clusters, so I have the three flowers with the big sequins. And then I throw in some of those little diaper pins and the little baby bottles. So there is dimension. I did stick the little leaf, the petal down, you know, so the heart. I, when I folded it in half, I glued the two sides together just so it wouldn't pop up and shoot all my sequins in the air. Um, so yeah, so that is going to do it for today's layout. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. Do you like to make the edge like a border? Um, I like to always leave something in the middle, just because. <laughs> um, and I was thinking about putting a title on there, um, but I kind of decided against it because I just really like the way this looks. And not every layout needs... A title right it just doesn't it doesn't need a title it just needs just whatever you want scrapbook for yourself that's what I do I know but yes love the products it feels so pretty I love to fill the mixed media um, it just feels so nice like it's all lumpy and bumpy and textury and so when you look at this you'll definitely you know, so you see a lot going on, but this little white space for me, it makes me feel like that gives you a place for your, a place for your eyes to rest as you're looking at the photos. The three clusters are kind of pulling you in, and it's just, I mean, that's beautiful because he's so cute. But anyway, that's going to do it for today, so don't forget to do all the fun youtube -y things. Head over to Bruce Monroe and check out the Chroma Glaze and this beautiful stencil, which is called Blanket of Blooms. With the little leaves and this would be so much fun to do like distress ink through or some chroma mist or some glitter glaze but yes go ahead and check that out and i will see you guys next time with another video bye